torch, Jeanette Isabella, bring a torch, come hurry and run. It is Jesus, good folk of the village, Christ is born, and Mary's calling, ah, ah, beautiful is the mother, ah, ah, beautiful is the child. It is wrong when the baby is sleeping, it is wrong to speak so loud. Silence now as you come near the cradle, lest you awaken little Jesus. Ah, ah, beautiful is the mother. Ah, ah, beautiful is the child. Skies are glowing, the heavens are cloudless, bright the path to the manger bear. Hasten all who would see little Jesus shining bright as yonder star. Ah, ah beautiful is the mother. Ah, ah, Beautiful is the child. Ah, ah, beautiful is the mother. Ah, ah, beautiful is the child. In a time of violence and despair, an ancient prophet gives us good news. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. For a child has been born to us. Wide will be the dominion and boundless the peace. With justice and righteousness from now on forevermore. We light the Christ candle. Thankful that God has come to us, not as a conquering hero, but as a child whose faithful, peaceful life will follow God's way of love. Let us pray. Living God, as you come into our world, may the love of Christ shine brightly at the center of our lives, spreading warmth and light in us, in this congregation and throughout all the earth. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Titus 2, 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright and godly of our great, for the hope, blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Here ends the reading. Born King, we will join with the angels singing. 
There's a bright star shining in the heavens above. There's glorious music in the air. The world has come to see the wonderful light. All of God's creation breaks forth in celebration. From the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. When an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Here ends the reading. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Lord Will you pray with me, please? Let the words of my mouth 
and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I want to begin tonight by telling you about my neighborhood. I live in a cul-de-sac of sorts. I live in a very modest neighborhood, particularly by Sun City West standards, but still, it is a lovely, lovely neighborhood, particularly at this time of the year. On any given night in early December, you can turn the corner into our cul-de-sac and be greeted by a winter wonderland without the snow, of course. Our neighbors go all out on lights on their homes. It's one of the things that I immediately liked about our neighbors and our neighborhood. I love Christmas lights, and so apparently do my neighbors. We are an interesting mix in my neighborhood. Not everyone is Christian. I figured this out a while ago at a couple of our get-togethers that we have had over the summers. Somebody always throws a pool party and someone else gets us organized for a great big multi-family garage sale. And when we are all together, it is obvious that we are not all of the same faith and we are not all of the same ethnic background. We have a Muslim family among us and a couple of Jewish families as well as some Orthodox families and even some Catholic and some Protestant families. I believe that Paul and Jordan and I are the only United Methodists on the block. Several marriages are, eth uh, are ethnically mixed um, as well as the birth backgrounds of our children. And while we don't know each other all that well, we smile and we wave as we come and go, and we always stop to chat with each other when we see one another at the mailbox. We have forged a loose bond that for all our differences somehow works. I read a very profound statement quite a while ago. Making contact with people not like yourself is one of the best things that a person can do. I read that in a book by Ron Suskind called The Way of the World. Suskind tells the story of a boy from Afghanistan named Ibrahim who comes to the United States as an exchange student. His introduction to American culture is difficult at first, so strange, so very counter to what he has been taught in Afghanistan. Because he cannot acclimate at first, he is almost sent home, which would have been perceived as disgrace by the Afghanis. But finally, a family is located to become his new foster family. The husband and the wife, an older couple, have fostered Afghan students in the past, and so they understand Ibrahim and the culture shock that has paralyzed him. Little by little, they invite Ibrahim into their world. At high school, Ibrahim becomes acquainted with another student by the name of Jillian. Jillian is kind, and she is gentle, and Ibrahim learns to trust her, and they become very fast friends. One day, Ibrahim's foster mother, Mary Lisa, asked him about his birthday. Ibrahim has no idea when his birthday is, except he thinks it's in the spring. Well, that's close enough, says Mary Lisa. And together, they plan a party, inviting some of the other foreign exchange students from school, and, of course, Jillian. On the night of the party, 
Everyone crowds into the small living room of Mary Lisa and her husband, Tom. And as Mary Lisa brings out the cake bearing Ibrahim's name, everyone sings, happy birthday to you, including Ibrahim, who isn't sure of the protocol. <laughs> we sing to you, Ibrahim. It's your day. And they all laugh together, including Ibrahim. As the party winds down, Jillian comes and sits beside Ibrahim on the couch. And she says that she has something that she wants to show him. And reaching into her purse, she pulls out a picture of herself and a baby, a little girl. That, Ibrahim, is a picture of me and my little girl, she says. She's just over a year old now. And Ibrahim looks at the picture and then up to Jillian and then back at the photo. She's a very pretty little girl, he says. And neither of them speaks for a moment. And then Jillian wishes Ibrahim happy birthday and is out the door. Later that night, Ibrahim goes into the kitchen where Mary Lisa was doing the dishes. Mom, can I talk with you? And Mary Lisa could tell from his face that something was wrong. I think Jillian is married. Mom, she has a baby. And in an instant, it all clicks for Mary Lisa. She remembers hearing how two years earlier, a 10th grader had given birth. In their very small town, this was an event. She chooses her words carefully and tells Ibrahim that the baby's father and Jillian are not married. And then she asks Ibrahim, what do you think about that? As she watches this boy from another world struggle to make sense out of the fact that this young girl who gave birth out of wedlock is still alive and living with her child because in his world she might have been put to death. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, the prophet Isaiah declared, thousands of years ago, in the hope that such a child would unite the nations, bring people to their senses, restore justice and mercy, and the very delicate balance between gentleness and strength. Unto us a child is born. The prophet cried out, daring to believe that this child would break down the we-they divisions of people and create once again us. Us is such an important word in the Christmas story. It has been for thousands of years, and it is important tonight. It is important for all of those we-they relationships that exist in the world, the we-they relationships that exist in our cities and our towns and across borders and in our neighborhoods and sometimes, sometimes even in our own homes and our own families. Because there are always wounds. Always wounds, you know. Ugly wounds. Cleverly hidden, but there nonetheless. Pockets of bitterness where the waters of forgiveness have dried up. Niches of doubt where we wonder why the angels always sing to sing for the house next door, but never for us. 
hollows of, of anger and, and grief or fear that keep us estranged from one another, keep us from being a neighbor or a family. That is why tonight, God gives us a gift, the most precious gift that can ever be given, the opportunity to become us once again. Because the transforming moment of Christmas comes when we realize that God loves us so much that God will do anything, even become flesh and blood, to change the status of every we-they relationship. Just to make contact with people, people just like you, people just like me, not like God, because it's one of the best things that God can do. And that's all that God asks tonight, to make contact with us so that we are no longer we or they, but one people, whole and strong and kind and good. People who can love as God loves, across borders and, and cultures and every other division that separates us one from the other. Back in Mary Lisa's kitchen, Ibrahim thinks for a moment or two about this out-of-wedlock mother who would have been dead, long dead, in his hometown. And softly and simply, he says, but she's my friend. Two months later, that Muslim boy and that unwed mother would go to the school prom together. Making contact with people not like you is the best thing a person can do. Six years ago this week, our neighbors gathered out on our front lawn. Our house had been dark that year in the cul-de-sac because my husband, who usually scales tall ladders to hang Christmas lights, had been very ill. My husband has familial pulmonary fibrosis, which means that his lungs are scarred from what we don't know. So breathing can become very difficult at any moment when he gets a cold or he gets a respiratory infection. And that year he caught a bug, a bug that kept him down for nearly nine weeks. In addition to my church, I was doing double duty on Christmas Eve for his church too. Needless to say, Christmas lights were low on our list of priorities of things to do that year. But late one afternoon, ladders appeared, and strings of, of multicolored lights wound themselves across the top of our roof and down and around our bushes and around our hedges. And there was a bit of singing, and then there was a lot of laughter, and finally there was bright, beautiful light as the afternoon sun slipped below the horizon. My neighbors had heard why our house was in darkness. And so they brought the light to us. It was so kind. 
so wonderful, and it brought me to tears, this act of generosity and love from people that I hardly knew. And later as I thought about it, I thought, oh, but I do know them. I do know them. Because in the settling dusk, we and they stood arm and arm with one another and hugged each other as we oohed and awed over these beautiful lights. And we became us. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given that we might make contact with each other, with people not like one another. Because that is one of the best things that we can ever do in this world. Unto us, a child is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. Amen.